among secular progressive people, whenever we talk about the contemporary reality, there is a tendency to believe the following, that there was an ideal state earlier, a kind of platonic ideal from which the reality has become worse. This ideal consisted of unity and diversity, a tolerant society, a society in which all kinds of opinions flourished. And from there, we are now deviating into a world in which there is a monolithic imposition of a particular perception on everybody. And that the NDA, the BJP, the RSS are responsible for the imposition of this monolithic perception of Indian society. Now, I'm not saying that this is a false proposition. Romila Thapar, for instance, has talked about the Semitization of Hinduism, that from a group of Hindu religious segments, increasingly there is an attempt to construct a version of Hinduism which is parallel to that of any other Semitic religious groups. Uh, but on the other hand, it seems to me that no matter whether we talk about the old India or the new India, all of it was based on extraordinary caste oppression, on extraordinary social oppression. Again, one of my colleagues in JNU, Suvira Jaiswal, has in, always argued that the essence of Hinduism is a caste system. Now, if that is the case, then this platonic ideal is not something that we should be harking back too much to. Yes, of course, we should keep it in mind. We should, in fact, attack the degree to which there is this effort to impose a monolithic perception on the Indian society. But at the same time, what we need to do is to go beyond that old India as well. And I believe that was the underlying perception of the anti-colonial struggle, which wanted to create a notion of a political citizenship going beyond individual identities and going beyond individual caste and, and, and religious and other such identities. Now, if we are going to develop a notion of political citizenship, then it's not enough that there should be political rights, but it's extremely important that there has to be a set of universal economic rights. And these economic rights, the minimal economic rights to my mind, would be a right to food, universal right to food, a universal right to employment, a universal right to free publicly funded education, a universal right to free publicly funded health care, and of course a universal right for uh, old age pension and, and disability assistance. Now these, to my mind, are minimal universal rights which have to be institutionalized if we are going to define a concept of citizenship that goes beyond individual caste identities and so on, create an alternative perception of an Indian, which is not submerged in the kind of identities to which people are born. Now, the point is, of course, once you, you cannot have a world in which there is a political citizenship of a certain kind, and at the same time, you have these enormous social differences, you have castes and so on and so forth. One or the other is going to subvert I mean, one of these is going to subvert the other. And it seems to me that a political intervention of this kind is essential for subverting a social reality which is broken up into castes and other kinds of identity groups. In other words, one way of intervening in the process of modernization of the Indian society is in fact to create the notion of a political citizenship with universal rights, and these universal rights are not just political rights, which of course are there, like, 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 like universal adult suffrage and so on, but a set of economic rights. Now, this is something which I believe the country can easily afford. It would not be more than 10% of the GDP that is required for institutionalizing these universal rights. And of course, given the fact that we in India have a tax GDP ratio taking center and states together, which is not even 14%, just short of it, if you add 10% to it, that comes to 24%, which is actually not much higher than the tax GDP ratio in the lowest tax true blue capitalist country, that's the United States, Europe and 
depends on a much higher 30-35% tax GDP ratio. So we can easily afford it. India is one of the countries where the tax GDP ratio is among the lowest in the world and consequently we have enough resources to be able to afford it. Now this of course universalizing a set of rights does not by any means preclude affirmative action. On the other hand affirmative action would have to be added on to it. But on the other hand, the kind of resentment that affirmative action creates and of course the kind of jockeying for being the beneficiaries of affirmative action that is currently created is something that would disappear. It seems to me that one of the important factors behind the rise of the NDA, the BJP, the RSS is actually, in a sense, the support of certain intermediate strata, which, act, which, which, who, who are as you know, I mean, who, 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 whose resentment is being nurtured, vis-a-vis -vis the kind of vaguely, slightly progressive policies of redistribution that were effected under the UPA regime. I think Mikhail Kalitsky, the Polish economist, had this idea that intermediate strata are very important in third world societies, including societies like ours. The intermediate strata formed earlier the backbone of the public sector and the Nehruvian dirigism. The intermediate strata, in a certain sense, are now being increasingly mobilized for a cause of a neoliberal policy which is yoked to communal fascism. And I think if we are going to break that kind of yoking, then it's essential, in my view, to have an institutionalization of a set of universal rights which are enjoyed by everybody. And as I said, we can easily afford it. Now, this, of course, would require some kind of a going back on neoliberalism, of course, a reversal of neoliberalism. It would require capital controls because immediately Moody's might downgrade you. But th these are things which are absolutely essential if we're going to recapture uh, the political space required for ex giving expression to the idea of India that all of us are concerned with. Maybe I should stop there. Thank you very much.